Welcome to Houston Sports Talk with your host, Robert Land. Thanks for checking into the best Houston sports podcast and happy holiday week to everybody out there celebrating. And it's back for his weekly visit, our NFL and fantasy football expert, Andy Rio. And he's always full of stuffing, stuffing with great NFL stuff for us every week. And he's covered fantasy for nearly 20 years. And Andy, the discussion this week is the Texans potential move from Davis Mills to Kyle Allen. Levy was hinting at it. We're talking, me and you on Tuesday night, don't know what's going to happen, but it, it can't actually get worse with Kyle Allen, can it, if they make this tr- this move here? Well, I mean, it's not going to be good regardless. Uh, I mean, at this point, <laughs> yeah. uh, you could give him a shot. He has had some starting experience in the NFL. Uh, Davis Mills certainly has not looked great of late, um, you know, but, but I don't think Kyle Allen's the savior, let me put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think he is either, but it would be fun if we got more than five yards and a half. I don't know. Uh, Do you think the Texans organization would get roasted nationally if they move on from Levy Smith after this season? Or do you think they should even care if they get roasted considering how embarrassing they are already? Well, they've been roasted so much already at this point. I I mean, the key that the Texans are going to have to come up with is come up with some sort of plan that will actually get fans excited again. There's still a ways away, obviously right now, even a few more good drafts. I mean, there's still a ways away from even, even thinking about being in playoff contention, but you know, it certainly would be exciting if they get a new quarterback and then maybe bring back former franchise legend, D'Amico Ryans as head coach. He's done a great job as a defensive coordinator in San Francisco. And as we've seen in recent years, uh, the coaching tree of Kyle Shanahan is producing some pretty good results elsewhere, including with Miami, who the Texans are going to be squaring off with this week, of course. I love D'Amico, but somebody brought something up that I had forgotten. He sued the Texans back in 2014 because of the grass screwed up surface that the Texans had with the squares and all that. So I don't know if that's going to matter in in the hiring at this point, but I I would say it doesn't look good. I mean, Cal McNair was not the owner then. Obviously, uh, you didn't have Nick Casario and a lot of the other people in the front office, but I I, I don't know. That's not good. I must admit I had forgotten about that, uh, but I'm just thinking, you know, something that would at least excite the fans. I mean, they're going to probably be drafting a quarterback anyways. It would certainly help if they had a more compelling coach than Lovey. Uh, Lovey's a good guy by all accounts, but, uh, you know, football's a results driven business and there's been really no progress from the Texans. And even if you want to go back to his job at the university of Illinois, Brett Bielema has put Illinois in a much better position this year, uh, in terms of coaching. So, uh, it's been a while since Lovey had those great days in Chicago. Yeah. I I don't know what's going to happen, but. Yeah, it, it's, it needs some change just to make it a little bit more entertaining. I mean, they got the Dolphins this week. Dolphins and Texans from a fantasy perspective, looks like it's pretty obvious which way you would be going. What should the fantasy owner be thinking about leading into it? Because the Dolphins have had a great air attack this year, but we know what the Texans do with their ground defense. Well, certainly, I mean, you know, Tua, Tyreek Hill, Jalen Waddell, obviously every week starters. Uh, realistically, there's been enough work of late uh, for the X 49ers, uh, Raheem Mostert and Jeff Wilson Jr., uh, to where they've put up good numbers. And I think certainly uh, they're usable this week uh, against that Texans run defense. They can certainly, uh, one of the two, or maybe even both, uh, could be quite productive. About the only Miami guy I'd be hesitant to use is the tight end, Mike Gasicki. He certainly has been inconsistent this year, but otherwise fire up all your dolphins, including the Miami defense. If they're out there in your league and you need a defense this week, I would definitely go out and get them Uh, on the Texan side. I mean, really the only surefire starter is Damian Pierce and he was completely bottled up last week. It was his worst game of the season. Uh, He has not scored a rushing touchdown since week five. He did have a receiving touchdown Uh, late in the game against the Titans but with the volume he gets you certainly have to keep him in the lineup he's certainly capable of breaking one long run uh, that can uh, you know make his week in terms of fantasy and all that but 
Uh, the rest of the Texans, I mean, you know, you there's mid-level, you know, performances from Nico Collins. Brandon Cooks did look somewhat decent, but uh, it's such a limited passing game right now. I mean, maybe if they did go to Kyle Allen, it could help Collins and Cooks. But at this point, you know, Pierce is the only Texan I would have in any of my lineups. Yeah, Pierce is going to get it going. He's got to get that offensive line going a little bit too. And just a reminder to subscribe, comment, and like us on YouTube. It's the best way to support the show. Make sure to catch our live Texans Dolphins post game show with my co host, Sports Radio 610's Sean Bajani. If you don't catch it live, you can always check it out a little bit later on. But uh, what I think you're really going to want to listen to is our last show with NFL draft expert Joe DeLeon who broke down the major quarterback prospects in the draft. Yep, it's past time to discuss potential Texans uh, quarterback selections. And Andy, do you have a favorite quarterback going into the draft yet, or have you had much chance to look at the options out there? Well, I haven't uh, done an extensive study, but uh, certainly I like Bryce Young a lot at Alabama. I mean, you know, the thing you can say about Alabama quarterbacks where they propped up by their supporting cast, but I think the recent success of Tua and Jalen Hurts, uh, even though I know Jalen Hurts did transfer to Oklahoma for his final season, but uh, that speaks very highly. And I think there's a lot of people that are very high on Bryce Young, obviously. So uh, that would be my pick right now. But again, you know, a lot of things uh, to come and a lot of scouting to come yet. Absolutely. And Bryce Young, not filled with all of the skilled position guys that we've seen from Bama quarterbacks in the past, like Tua and, uh, you know, Jalen Hurts. But let's get to the marquee matchups and we can start with Giants and Cowboys on Turkey Day. We don't always get these quality matchups on Thanksgiving, but this one should be a good one. Giants got upset by the suddenly hot Lions and the Cowboys coming off that massive blowout of the Vikings. These two were on opposite ends of the spectrum on Sunday, Andy. Yes, they definitely were. And obviously uh, the concern for the Giants is Detroit was actually able to put the clamps on Saquon Barkley, uh, which was surprising. That was to me the most surprising aspect of that game, not that Detroit pulled off the upset because the Lions have generally been competitive this year, but Obviously, the Giants have got to find a way to get Barkley going against Dallas if they're going to have any chance to pull off the upset on the road. Uh, Daniel Jones has generally continued to perform better than expected. He's put up some decent fantasy games because he's able to run the ball, but I mean, there's just not much for him to work with outside of Darius Slayton. They just lost Rondale Robinson, a rookie out of Kentucky who'd had some decent moments uh, for the season. So uh, it's imperative that they get Barkley going and not expose uh, Jones as much to that, uh, you know, crazy Dallas pass rush and everything Uh, for the Cowboys. I mean, we're just really starting to see now how great Tony Pollard is. And there's actually enough room for both him and Zeke Elliott in the backfield of the Cowboys are rolling like they were in Minnesota because Zeke had a couple touchdowns as did Pollard. And of course uh, Pollard had those long receptions and everything. He's capable of scoring on any play, Uh, you know, Dak Prescott, CD lamb, Dalton Schultz, all good plays on a regular basis. Uh, It seems like they've kind of forgotten about Michael Gallup. And at this point until proven otherwise fantasy owners should do the same. Just out of curiosity, as far as the matchup on the field on a Thursday, Thanksgiving, how much does it help, do you think, the Cowboys to be hosting a game on Thursday? You know, that Thanksgiving game, does it help them at all in this matchup typically over the years? Well, I mean, just based on the general success of the franchise, I mean, it certainly, uh, if you go back, obviously, a ways, I mean, it certainly helps that they host that game. They certainly uh, have players that have played in it before and know how to prepare for it. Um, You know, they could, I guess, be a little bit flat after dismantling Minnesota, but uh, I think they're going to, you know, make sure that they're right and come out and win the game. Yeah, I have a feeling that they're going to be ready for this one. They like playing. I think they like playing on Thanksgiving. And, you know, with the NFL, they're putting together a few tributes to John Madden on Thanksgiving. And I don't know if people have noticed that, but you're going to notice it on Thursday with CBS, Fox, and NBC having a tribute video for Madden before each game. 
The Madden player of the game for each matchup gets $10,000 to donate to the youth or high school football program of their choice. And then fans on TV will see logos honoring Madden on the field in each game. What, what do you think of the tributes, Andy? Well, I think it's awesome. I, I mean, certainly uh, John Madden, to me, is unquestioned as the greatest football analyst of all time. And, you know, the kind of guy that everybody liked to spend their Thanksgiving with. I mean, sometimes the football games were better than others, but you could always count on Madden for some great entertainment, whether he was, you know, carving up turducken or uh, drawing the X's and O's on the screen and everything. And, and he was paired with, you know, so many great partners uh, through the years with Pat Summerall and Al Michaels and everything. Um, he actually, you know, in his early years, also worked with some other great announcers, such as Dick Stockton, not necessarily on the Thanksgiving Day games, but uh you know, yeah, I mean, it, it's going to be a very fitting tribute. I, I think that uh, the NFL has certainly done a lot uh, to make sure that uh, he's honored in a very proper way. Yeah, the tackle comes around here, and then it's a boom, and then it's a boom. Oh, yeah, I'm trying to do a little down, but not very good. And another strong Thanksgiving game, though, Andy. Patriots at the Vikings. Will Kirk Cousin be under siege again? Rough week for him against the Patriots, or rough week last week for him. And then the Patriots, D, they're no joke. No, it's going to be another challenge for Kirk Cousins, and it's well documented that uh, he doesn't necessarily have the greatest record in primetime games. So, um, you know, Minnesota also doesn't have to travel, so that does help. New England's going to be making the trip, and, and they had kind of an emotional win against the Jets, but um, it's also one of those where, you know, Bill Belichick usually is able to guard against the letdown with his team. I definitely think the Vikings are going to be in for a struggle because New England certainly knows uh, how to play defense and uh, the running back duo. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson had been doing very well, and I think he's still a viable fantasy starter, but his ceiling has been lowered with Damian Harris also showing well again. And I think that New England will use both of those backs to try to keep the Minnesota offense off the field. Uh, those would be the two main Patriots I would be using on offense. You could also use Jacoby Myers, who is their top wide receiver. Uh, pretty much everybody, as usual, that you would start for Minnesota should be started in this game. But, uh, you know, ceiling certainly could be a little lower against the Patriots. I mean, I, I think Minnesota overall probably has more talent. So I wouldn't rule out the Vikings winning this game. But uh, it's going to be a tough one. Uh, New England's in the thick of the play. Hunt and they need it uh, more than Minnesota does because the Vikings pretty much at this point are going to coast to the North title, uh, even if they, you know, continue on with uh, a slump, which, you know, obviously could have started uh, against the Cowboys. Yeah, it's crazy because you got another two teams with vastly different weeks. The Vikings getting crushed, the Patriots with that emotional punt return touchdown to win the game. And, you know, Andy, I, I think about Bill Belichick and his preparation in a short week. I feel like he's get, he definitely gets the advantage in a short week prep prep thing for a Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Bengals at the Titans. Will the Bengals have Chase and Mixon? A huge story for both the Bengals and fantasy owners. Yeah, Jamar Chase, uh, there are some rumblings he could be back this week, uh, but as the time we record this, no certainty whatsoever. So that's something to monitor. Uh, Joe Mixon, of course, left the game against Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, he may or may not be available this week. I mean, it's going to depend on how he progresses through concussion protocol. So uh, in the event that Mixon doesn't go, uh, you know, Samaj P. Ryan did very well in the win over the Steelers for Cincinnati, and he would definitely be somebody to grab in free agency. He seems to be available in a fair amount of leagues. So I would look uh, for P. Ryan to fill the void if Mixon can't go. Uh, T. Higgins performed well against the Steelers, and certainly he's a quality start. Uh, you could use Tyler Boyd. Uh, and Hayden Hurst as well. On the Tennessee side of the equation, uh, I wouldn't expect Austin Hooper to de duplicate his fine game that he had against Green Bay, but Ryan Tannehill has been getting the passing game going. Traylon Burks, the rookie out of Arkansas, showed well against the Packers. Uh, we've had a couple of one-hit wonders from the Titans with Hooper this past week, and then the week before that, Nick Westbrook-Akina. 
Uh, I think Burks is the guy you want to start every week for Tennessee if you want to start one of their receivers. And, of course, Derrick Henry is still Derrick Henry. Uh, should be a pretty entertaining game. Those two teams, of course, had a real close battle in the playoffs last year. The, the Titans uh, would love to exert revenge on the Bengals, uh, but Cincinnati is definitely uh, in a little bit more of a desperate spot than the Titans, who should coast to the South title, of course. Cincinnati – uh, behind Baltimore in the north and then in a jumbled mess in the wild card race. So the Bengals definitely need this one. Hard to make any predictions until we know who's going to play in the game too. And let's get to the uh, Rams at the Chiefs. Weird to see a team go to Los Angeles to play one week and then host a team from Los Angeles the next week. H how does this game look to you, Andy? Well, given the way the Rams look of late, it looks like it's probably going to be another fun day for Kansas City. Um, you know, Matthew Stafford has gone back into concussion protocol for the second time in three weeks. Uh, he doesn't look likely to go. There's a little bit of clarity in the Los Angeles backfield. They surprisingly waived Daryl Henderson. So now it's Cam Akers and Kyron Williams. But a bad offensive line and an offense that's definitely broken without Stafford, certainly broken too without Cooper Cup. Um, you know, you have Allen Robinson's been a big disappointment. Tyler Higby's been okay at tight end. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, Van Jefferson, Ben Skoranek. I mean, they've gotten some surprisingly long plays from Tutu Atwell. But, you know, in, in recent years, uh, you know, you could look at that Rams team and, and they got fantasy superstars. Right now, there's not somebody that you can look at on that team and, you know, say, oh, I really want to start this guy. I mean, it definitely looks like a lost season. It's it's ironic because usually it's the loser that has the Super Bowl hangover. But as we just discussed with Cincinnati, um, you know, maybe they're not tearing up the NFL, but they're six and four and in playoff contention. The Rams just look done at this point. Um, you know, Kansas City, uh, they certainly have been uh, getting a lift on the ground from Isaiah. Pacheco, their rookie, he had over 100 yards against the Chargers with Clyde Edwards-Hilaire out. Him and Jarek McKinnon, uh, both are viable plays. Uh, we'll have to see if Juju Smith-Schuster comes back. Uh, of course, Kelsey and Mahomes just absolutely magical, as we saw on Sunday night. Uh, and they did lose Kadarius Toney to an injury, which unfortunately seems to be the story of that young man's career, both starting with the Giants and the Chiefs. Tremendous talent, but uh, injuries have been a major issue. But nevertheless, uh, I think it's uh, another uh, big day for the Chiefs. How much with the Rams does it have to do with the fact that they've spent draft choices for now and that may be catching up to them finally? Of course, Aaron Donald also, maybe not the quite the Aaron Donald that we're used to seeing either. He's dropped a little bit. He's still a really great player, but, but not quite the Aaron Donald that just dominate, like the far and away best at his position. Well, yeah, I, I mean, you know, the draft picks, I think the lack of them have certainly hurt. Uh, the biggest issue is that they've just had offensive line problems throughout the season. I mean, Andrew Whitworth retiring really uh, kind of created a chain reaction, and they just have not been able to get, uh, you know, the offense going in large part because of that. Yeah, absolutely. That's a big loss for them. And then last game, Packers at Eagles, both teams – with a ton on the line here. The Eagles record is great, but they haven't exactly looked like the Super Bowl contender that they were looking like just a few weeks ago. The Packers fighting for their life, Andy. Yeah, this is pretty much it for Green Bay. They they need to win this game, and, and I'm not sure they're going to do it in Philadelphia on Sunday night. I think they can be competitive with the Eagles, given that uh, Philadelphia has kind of been in a little bit of a funk lately. But, you know, there's a lot at stake for the Eagles. Even with that record, the Cowboys are not very far behind them. And if they beat the Giants later in the season, they get Philadelphia in Arlington. So, uh, you know, I, I suspect the Eagles will get back on track a bit. But I do think they're missing Dallas Goddard. That's one of their key intermediate weapons in the passing game. So it definitely puts a higher burden on A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. Those guys are uh, certainly capable of huge games at any time. Uh, Jalen Hurts was clutch, though. I mean, they were in obviously bad shape against Indianapolis, but he held them together and got the go-ahead touchdown late. Uh, their defense held their own when they had to. 
Um, Miles Sanders is somebody that needs to get on track against the Packers, and he may be able to do that. Their run defense is not all that great, but he's had a couple of off weeks. Uh, as far as the Packers go, I mean, the story of late has been Christian Watson in fantasy, uh, five touchdowns over the past two weeks. So he's become an automatic starter. And, and Rodgers has played a little bit better since he's, uh, you know, started to, you know, ramp up and everything like that. I mean, you could use Alan Lazard, too. Uh, certainly Aaron Jones is, is a must play pretty much regardless of matchup. Uh, you know, I think it's probably one of those things that's going to end up kind of being another frustrating loss for Green Bay. They've had a lot of them this season. With the Eagles, do you feel like there's anything that makes sense for their last three weeks where they just haven't looked quite right? Or you just, you feel like, you know, you can't play at, at the level that they were playing at. And maybe it's just, this is kind of, it's some, there's somewhere in between the team that we saw the first few weeks and the, and the team that we've been seeing the last three. Yeah, I mean, it's tough to keep up that kind of pace. I mean, they were just uh, steamrolling people earlier in the season. So now as more you know, teams get more on film on them and everything, there are adjustments that are taking place. But uh, I think everything is still overall just fine in Philadelphia. If you want to ask Andy fantasy questions or anything NFL related, he's at Andy Rio, R-I-O-U-X on Twitter. Just go uh, say hello to him and... We want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving to you and the family, Andy. And, you know, I'm sure you're excited about watching a, a ton of football this Thanksgiving. And uh, just always a blast to have you on. Can't wait to do it again uh, next week. And you'll, you'll, you might get, you might be like a couple pounds heavier next week. We don't know. <laughs> well, happy Thanksgiving to you and, and all the uh, listeners out there. And yeah, very excited. Uh, just a ton of football, you know, starting on Thursday and then, a lot of uh, compelling college games on Friday and Saturday and then pro all the way through Monday. It's great. It's uh, it's an awesome weekend. Uh, Thanksgiving weekend is definitely uh, there's a lot to, to be thankful for uh, on Thanksgiving. And certainly the football is a major reason uh, to give thanks. Yeah. Looking forward to Thursday for sure. And the whole weekend with all the football this weekend and just the, the classic matchups in college football too. Cause I know you're a big college fan as well. We've got some great, great, uh, you know, the traditional matchups that we have during Thanksgiving week weekend. So that's pretty cool too. Yeah, absolutely. You're listening to Houston sports talk. Hey, you can support the show by subscribing on YouTube and commenting on the videos. Listen to Houston Sports Talk on Spotify, Apple, Stitcher, and Google. Don't forget to tell a friend and share our show on social media. Spread the word, everybody. Thanks for listening.